What's going on everyone, I'm back with another video and in this video I'll be talking about the April slash May SAT. Now for a lot of students, you guys might be wondering, April SAT, there is no April SAT. Well you see, the April SAT is usually the SAT that's administered within schools. Usually there's a big school-wide SAT exam that's administered, at least I remember when I was in high school, uh, there's a specific SAT for every single high school that was administered on like April 11th or April 10th. And there's usually no like actual SATs like, that you can go to test centers and take in April. But for schools, your school usually will give you at least one free SAT, which is in April. So that is why in order to prepare for that, I'm making this video. So to make sure you all get the best score that you possibly can get on the April SAT, I'll be giving you some key tips on how to ace it because I want all you to ace it because historically, at least from what I've remembered and what I've seen, the school-wide SAT usually isn't that hard and the curve usually is a bit nicer on the school-wide SAT. And I don't think it's because of any particular reason. I just think maybe it's coincidental that every time the school administers SAT exam, it's a little bit easier. Um, maybe College Board designs it that way, who knows. So the first tip, and this is a tip that I've said in almost all my videos, but yet people do not listen to for some reason, and that's to take practice exams. Now, with practice exams, I understand that no one wants to sit every single like other day or other other day for three hours and take SAT exam. Personally, I would hate that. In fact, I never even did that when I studied for the SAT. I would take practice exams probably every five days. Um, and that too, I would not take it one sitting. I would take probably the math part in the morning and the reading part maybe later. Sometimes I would do it in one sitting if I really felt that ambitious, but you can break it up. Like you don't have to, I know there's a common saying, like you want to simulate the test environment. You want to, you know, uh, pretend you're taking the actual SAT exams. So you want to sit in an isolated room for three hours. Yeah, it's fine. You don't really have to do that because yeah, it's good to mimic the test environment, but if you've studied and you've practiced, the only reason you want to simulate the test environment is so you don't get pressured for time, right? So you are able to finish within time. But if you study and practice and you bought my SAT math course, link description below, then you've probably, you have all the skills and abilities needed to finish the entire SAT exam within time where you don't have to worry about any time pressure. So just take practice exams and it's fine to split up the math part and the reading part. In fact, it's even fine to split up like the calculator, non-calculator, writing, comprehension. Now you don't wanna make it too far in between. Personally, just do like a math in the morning, reading at night. That's probably the best way you can do it or just take it all in one sitting. Now the second tip is to be sure to study SAT math more because SAT math, and I've said this many times before as well, is the definitely the easier section for most people. It's a section that where you can prove your score from like a 500 points to like 800, which is like a perfect score. It's very doable. I went from, I'm from a 620 to 800, so you can too. And if you do not know how to, then be sure to check out my SD math course in the description below, where I cover every single SD math topic and teach exactly how to get 800 perfect score on the SD math exam extremely thoroughly. Like you want to know all the SD math tricks, for example, like negative B over A, C over A. Uh, adding or subtracting linear equations, uh, the quadratic rule. There's a bunch of things you need to know, and if you don't know them, then you're not gonna be able to be as fast as possible on the ST math course, and that can affect your overall score, which is why I made that course in the first place, and also why I made a bunch of videos about these topics. And now the next tip, and this tip is definitely kind of dreaded. Saying this just gives me PTSD about what I had to go through when I studied for the SAT, and that is to improve your reading comprehension skills, and that means to read. And I know a lot of people probably watching this video are like, yo, I'm not trying to read. Like, I don't like reading books. I don't like reading articles. I hate English class. Poetry, what is that? I only poetry I like to listen to is music, right? That's the only thing I will actually read. If you're not lyrics, then I don't want to read you. That's basically what my attitude was when I was studying for SAT and in high school in general. I was never the reading student. But nonetheless, if you want a high school in the SAT to get into a college or you want to, you just gotta suck it up and you gotta improve your reading comprehension skills. Now, what is the best way to improve your reading comprehension skills? Unfortunately, I do not have a course for reading comprehension like I do ST math. So for reading comprehension, and this is definitely still a surefire way of getting a high score in the ST reading section, is to use Khan Academy. Khan Academy has not changed when it comes to the ST reading section like it has to ST math. ST reading section, Khan Academy is money on. In terms of passages are good, the questions are amazing, and it gives you a really good accurate representation of what you can expect on the SAT. And the best part is they break it down into reading science, I think like reading argumentative, uh, reading history, and um, reading social studies maybe. But the breakdown is really nice because you can attack every single uh, sub topic for the ST reading section so that you can ultimately maximize your score and you can find out, hey, maybe I'm weak in ST reading or hey, maybe I'm weak in SAT um, science passages or ST history passages. Like most people suck at uh, history passages, including myself, but are stellar when it comes to science passages. Now, why is this? 
The reading science passages, the questions are based on factual information. You can literally verify answer choice is correct for every single question just by reading. The history passages is more about interpretation. How did you interpret what this guy was saying? How did you interpret what Lincoln was saying about emancipation, right? And this can get really confusing because people interpret things differently based on their background, based on um, their perspectives of things. So those questions are always the harder questions, which is why I personally believe um, students struggle so much for SAT reading history passages or narratives because it's really open to interpretation, really open-ended, while science is like factual, like it's like math, ST math, like you know if you're right or wrong. So now the question is how to improve your reading comprehension skills. Yes, use Khan Academy. Yes, watch the basic and hard example videos that Khan Academy provides, but ultimately the best way is just to read. Now, what should you read, right? You don't wanna be reading Clifford or Barney because that's not gonna help you improve your reading comprehension skills. What you need to do is you need to be reading some like scholar passages. In fact, just uh, read the news. Like read news articles, read like the New York Times, read um, the latest thing Biden has uh, said or something about uh, Russia and Ukraine. Read about any social topic, but you just wanna keep reading because when you read, you understand sentences, you understand what a proper sentence looks like, right? And this will also help you in the ST writing section because personally I've realized that as I started reading more, I understood what a proper sentence looked like, right? I could see grammar mistakes before I even looked at the answer choices. Like when I would read the ST writing passage uh, passages and I'll see the underlined um, uh, words, which means this is a question, right? Corresponding to one of the questions and stuff. I'll be like, okay, um, I can already see that, hey, this and is misplaced or this is missing a comma because I read so much, I know how these sentences are supposed to look like. And as a result, I can just find the answer choice that matches my answer, right? I don't have to read the answer choices and see uh, which one's correct. I already know the correct answer. I have to see which answer choice matches my answer. And that's a proper mindset that you guys should have. That goes to my last tip, right? You want to be able to generate the answer in your head before you even read the answer choices. If you're at that level, then you are almost guaranteed a 1500 plus score, maybe even a 1540 plus score. And I personally got 1540 because if you are able to find the answer in your head before you even look at the answer choices for ST math or for SAT reading, then you are, you are at the top SAT performance peak or you're at the top SAT performance level, you're like LeBron James of the SAT exam, because all you need to know, right? If you're ever generating answers before, then it's one, you save so much time because now you don't, you don't have to be like, hmm, A is good, but so is B. Oh, C is good too. And you have to decide between which one is correct. If you know the answer in your head before, all you have to do is find which answer choice matches your answer, because one of them will match your answer, unless you're completely wrong, you do not know what you're doing, which in most cases will not happen if you practice properly for the ST math uh, section and ST reading section. Now my last tip is to learn grammar rules because ST writing section, yes, you can read a lot and that will definitely help you a lot. But at the end of the day, you still want to learn grammar rules like um, when to use M dashes, uh, where those M dashes can be placed, semicolons, the fact that they're joined by two independent clauses or they uh, semicolon joins into two independent clauses. You want to know about colons, right? Uh, when they're used for emphasis and stuff and you want to learn about uh, sentence modifier, basically every single topic that's listed on Khan Academy, you want to look at those topics because that's going to help you a lot. It's going to take you a long way because people usually neglect grammar rules, right? Like I've been mostly watching this video, don't know when to use a semicolon properly. And personally, I didn't either. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why you got to study. And that's why you got to learn them because if you're able to learn them, then one, you'll be a better writer, which will help you on your college essays. And two, SC writing section will be Super easy and you want to go get at least like a 40 to 42 out of 44 on the ST writing section. You'll be able to do that if you know your grammar rules and if you read. So if you guys enjoyed these tips, then be sure to like the video. Check out my ST math course, link description below. It's helped so many students already, a lot of positive reviews. So I highly recommend it. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys get the best score you possibly can. Peace.